Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to another, well, actually it's kind of the same guide, but I just got Master on full AD support Shaco again, and last time I made a guide about this, it was for, it was for when I got to Diamond on it, which was a different build, and then I got to Master on that same build, and then I demoted out of Master, and now I got back into it again with a different build that I found works better, so I figured it was, it was time to do a little... Uh, update, update, excuse me, for the build, and uh, we can sort of see why it works and note the differences. And yes, that picture from the thumbnail is actually a real message that I got from a real player who did not enjoy my playstyle. So if you're looking in for an excuse to thicken your skin, this is definitely a way to do that. <laughs> um, because people do not enjoy that you're playing this in ranked, uh, even if you're stomping on it. You're gonna get reactions. That's just that's just the truth. Uh, and if you're not stomping on it, then you're you're really gonna get reactions. So, as you guys can see, I found success with this kind of, you know, this was the support build that I ran before, but modified away from mobility boots. I used to run Mobility Boots with Treasure Hunter for maximum gold generation and to still have the mobility that I needed. I've swapped away from that and I'll show you how, but it got me to like 94 LP and then I just went on a losing streak today and it was really sad. Um, so I kind of sat down after these four defeats and I was like, there's something about my style and my aggression that isn't working. Because when I play this way and I play hyper aggressively and I go full psycho, it, you know, you, you get losing streaks like this sometimes. And it's like, okay, that that's when I feel like I have to step back and start thinking a little bit about why some of the things I do don't work. Uh, so I did that. And I modified the build further, and I started thinking about Umbral Glaive as an item. So I wanted to just see if I could make that work better. And uh, lo and behold, it got me to master within the same day. So uh, pretty awesome stuff. Um, I know it's late in the season. It's very late in the season, I agree. But this is still going to hold up for next season, even though they are removing mythic items. Because trust me, this build is not really about mythic items as such. Uh, it's just about using a true AD Shaco the way you would build him in the jungle, but in the support role instead, and finding a way to do that viably. And this game was an absolute banger, by the way. 43 minutes almost, and I got 18 kills. We almost lost that game. They were at our Nexus, and we had one Nexus tower on like 20% health when we turned it around and I killed them all. So you get some pretty epic games out of this pick if you can make it work. Diving into the runes, they look very similar to what they did before, but in my previous setup, I was running Eyeball Collection because I wasn't playing with Umbral Glaive necessarily. And I was also running Treasure Hunter because I was uh, I was playing a gold generation concept build, which is also part of the reason why I ran Triumph and then I had Cut Down for damage because Cut Down is just really, really good damage on Shaco overall. So this is what I played with and this is what I had um, Triumph generates a lot of gold throughout an entire game if you can create the action that you need to create. And Treasure Hunter, obviously, is just extra gold. The whole idea here was that you're playing support, so you don't really have access to gold, but at the same time you're trying to play an assassin, and you're also building him like an assassin because it is AD Shaco, but from an unconventional point of view. Uh, it worked until it didn't, so to speak, and I had to change it around. So I went to Zombie Ward because Zombie Ward and Umbral Glaive kind of just go hand in hand. You have to have one if you're running the other. And then I pivoted away from my gold generation concept, and I started to... to Actually, that was it was kind of before that. Even before I went Umbral Glaive, I had already been uh, experimenting with Relentless Hunter and Boots of Swiftness. Because as amazing as mobility boots are for almost any melee support champion, 
uh, losing all of that movement speed when you're in combat is actually a serious problem. And I just found that having Booza Swiftness movement speed allowed me to outplay people and it allowed me to space people very, very hard and bait them very hard when I'm actually in combat with them. So that's why I like Relentless Hunter. And then I ended up swapping over to, I believe it's Water Walking and Nimbus Cloak that I was running. It's just one of those things where Shaco, you know, the more you play him with Hail of Blades in support, the more you start to understand that, okay, it really, really is a jungle champion that I'm playing in the wrong role, and I need to not be in lane very much, because the more, I mean, you can be in lane for experience, and, and you need to be in lane for some of the game, because if not, then your style is too volatile, and you lose tempo and fall behind and all that. But you're going to be naturally spending time in river, and you're going to be naturally wanting more movement speed that you can abuse in your queue and also just for making sure that you're winning trades, hitting all of your Halo Blades attacks. Uh, if a skirmish is happening in the river, you need to be able to win that. So that's why these runes are so good. I run Flash Ignite every game, don't ask. And here's the build. So as you can see, I have starting items and consumables up top. Standard Spectral Sickle. Sometimes I get refillable. It's not very often though because I value my gold extremely highly and I don't value my health very highly. So <laughs> why would I need sustain? It's kind of like that's the way I'm thinking, but sometimes I get it anyway. It kind of depends on like recall timing and a bunch of stuff. Um, Boots of Swiftness. This was the thing that changed from the first time I got to Master playing full AD Shaco. This used to be Boots of Mobility and my runes were different. That was the gold generation thing that I ran. And uh, what got to me to master this time was the combination of the in-combat power of just having the movement of Boots of Swiftness with the not-as-combat-focused Umbral Glaive first item. Because what I used to do was Eclipse first item. Uh, I also tried running Eclipse first and then Umbral Glaive later, but it, it kind of like isn't worth it and it sort of fizzles out in a weird way and you stack your zombie wards uh, pretty slowly and late in the game. So I just get Umbral first into Eclipse, into Prowlers, and then I, if the game goes long enough, I spend my last uh, item slot on Vigilant Wardstone and I don't actually sell my support item. Now, it, it used to be before that if the game went long enough and I truly was, you know, consistently assassinating, obviously I would get rich. And what would happen is I would fill out my inventory with other things like a Guardian Angel last item, um, sell my Spectral Sickle for like an LDR because LDR is amazing on Shaco. Um, so, so things like GA and LDR have fallen out of favor for me. Uh, because over time, I, I feel like I realized it's not my job on this champion to be able to kill everything in the late game. So I don't really need the LDR. And as for Guardian Angel, as amazing as that item is in the late game, or just in general, um, it doesn't allow me to, to have anything to do with vision control. And if I want to spam control wards and still have a bunch of amazing stats, Vigilant Wardstone is for sure the play. And I actually checked out the numbers on this thing when I played that super long game where I ended up buying it. And it gave me like 48 attack damage or something. So this was the game, okay. So I had full build with the Vigilant Wardstone and I was just buying mass control wards, right? And I was getting Elixir of Wrath, I believe it's called. So this thing gives you 20% increased attack damage and ability haste, and it also gives you some health, which is always nice. Um, the health is nice, but you're really you're really more interested in the haste and the sheer amount of damage that you're getting out of it. Because you look at this ward item thing, and you're just thinking, that's not a damage item. But it becomes a damage item, because this thing, with full build, actually gives almost as much attack damage as one of these, like, full lethality items. I mean, it gives as much AD as Umbral Glaive, literally. It gives the same uh, attack damage. The only downside being that it doesn't have lethality on it, but I mean, you're still getting the mythic passive from Eclipse because that actually counts for this item as well. 
Uh, so it's not like you're missing out on stats or anything. So the the sort of classic endgame AD items that you would buy on Jungle Shaco with Halo Blades, they fell to the wayside for me, and that's because my gameplay became much clearer. Uh, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the only thing I can do on this champion in the later stages is assassinate targets that are meant to be assassinated. I'm not there to kill tanks. The only time I'm ever hitting a tank is if I'm trying to kill the enemy frontline hitting someone else. So if I have a hyper carry and I want to play for my hyper carry, maybe then I'm hitting a tanky target. That's the only argument I could possibly think of that has anything to do with LDR. And at the end of the day, I mean, that wasn't necessary at all, because you guys have just seen that I played a game with 18 kills without any problems. Uh, and that's without LDR, it's without GA, it's without all those things. You're going to be missing a defensive tool, though, uh, which is sad, but that's par for the course on this champion. You just have to have good decision-making, and if you make a wrong decision, you're going to die. That's just the way it works. Uh, so that's kind of like the core build that I ran. Uh, Elixir of Wrath, you could put in there, because uh, that's what I'm buying. In the in the extremely few games that it becomes relevant, it is Elixir of Wrath that I'm running. I also have a little tab here called Spell Shield. If I'm playing against like a Kai'Sa, either a full AP Kai'Sa or even a standard Kai'Sa, Edge of Night can be really nice. Um, other champions like Anivia, uh, Syndra, maybe Karthus. There's a bunch of champions in the game where you, you just don't want to deal with the pick potential or the, the power of a single spell from that champion. And when that's the case, I swap out uh, Prowler's Claw for Edge of Night. So it becomes a late item and it only becomes relevant in the longer games. Uh, but I have actually bought it and it works very well. I also ended up theory crafting a couple adaptive builds, which I have been using. Because sometimes in solo queue, the enemy team will draft, and this is not as often in the higher elo games, in my experience. But even in higher elo games, there's like 10% of the games, maybe a little less. But some of the games, uh, they will draft three damage dealers on the enemy team who have the same damage type. And if the, <laughs> if the enemy team has three damage dealers of the same type... That's effectively a full AD team or a full AP team, in my opinion. And if they do that, I am building resists. So I love Boots of Swiftness and they give me everything I need, but I am more than willing to pivot into Steel Caps or Merc Trets if the situation calls for it. I will be slower, but I will be more survivable and I have won uh, several games with these adaptations. Um... Obviously, when I do these defensive resist-oriented builds, my core is still Umbral Glaive into Eclipse. Uh, and there's only one item slot between Eclipse and Vigilant Wardstone. So this hasn't really been a question for me because it hasn't happened. But in theory, I guess you could forego the Wardstone for the last resist item just to have, you know, more value from that stat if you care about that. Uh, same thing is true for, for the magic resist. Mauve Mordius and Wit's End are both viable. If you want to forego the Wardstone on a full build, I guess you could do that. I don't know if I would do that. I think the Wardstone is really nice. But it's just good to have options, so that's why I have them listed there. And that is the build that got me to master playing full AD Shaco. So there you go. We, uh, we had a struggle. We had some success. This is from a bunch of normal games. We had some success. We had a struggle. And then we adapted into a utility focus. And by the way, this is what's so crazy about these Umbral Glaive uh, support champions is that I'm not a real support, you know, I'm pretending like I'm a real support, but what I actually am is I'm just an assassin. So how do you make that viable? Well, it's the same concept uh, as with Pike, right? If you can get an item that gives you 
161 vision score in a game, I would say that makes you a support. Arguably. At least for solo queue, right? So, that's it. If you want people to be very, very mad at you and uh, <laughs> send you insane death threats, I guess you can do what I did and play full AD Shaco support in ranked and get to master on it. It's not easy, but it's very, very fun. Probably some of the most fun I've ever had playing this game. <laughs>